Hey homo sapiens on my bus, it's me Rogue Marble Scott. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back any new watchers or subscribers. My face feels really tight right now. So, um, today I am going to do a landscape transformation on my face using face paints only. I'm not going to use any makeup whatsoever. And um, I decided to do this landscape look because I was inspired by a new musical, a musical in the process of being produced and orchestrated in being showcased as well. The musical is The Juniper Tree. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and just let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see in the future. See you soon. So to start off this tutorial, I'm going to cover the top part of my face with a blue face paint. And for some reason, I am doing the uh, background first. So initially, when I thought of this, I drew it down on a sheet of paper, but I did not sketch it out of my face, which I, in my last video, said that you should do when you're doing a look that is very detailed. However, today I didn't, so I'm contradicting myself. But as you can see, I'm pasting blue all over my face, and then I'm going in with green. So the blue being the sky, and the green going to be the grass. So that's what I'm doing now, I'm just sponging everything. I'm gonna need to take my top off, because I, as I was doing this, and I don't know if you can see it in my eyes, but I decided, yeah, you know what, I wanna go further down, onto my neck and maybe shoulder blades and you know continue on with this look so now I'm using a white face paint because I want the sky to appear a little bit frosty but I didn't want to use a lighter blue I rather just used you know the white that I'm using and create my own shade instead of using another shade of face paints and oh basically I couldn't find a lighter blue because I was in a rush <laughs> but anyway I'm creating a gradient of blue which really doesn't matter because you're not really going to see it much anyway now using a thin detailing brush I'm creating strokes of grass very roughly and very sporadically I'm not being too careful about where I'm placing them I'm just being more careful about how I'm stroking the brush on my face you know making sure that it's thicker at the the base and thinner at the ends so kind of like flicking it onto my face rather than drawing it onto my face and I'm using one shade of green here but I am going to go and use a second shade of green once I feel like this is you know all fulfilled onto my face so still using the first shade as you can see with the face paints underneath they do kind of blend and create this grass look and now I am using using a really light pale green to go over what I've just done because I want this look to have some depth definition to the whole look this uh, face paint actually looks really white on camera I have no idea why but it's not white it's just a really pale green just to let you know that So now that I've got my base grass done and my highlighted grass, I'm going to create the shadowed grass and that's me just going over using a darker mix of green that I've used for my base base and not the strokes that I've already created on my face. And once I've finished with that, we're going to move on to doing the tree. So I'm going to sketch it out using a white eyeliner and my idea for this tree is that I wanted it to look more like a... a a old hand trying to grasp something in the air so I'm basically using the tree as 
a, a more forecoming look so the leaves are going to be around the tree and not all over the branches basically so as you can see here I'm just filling in that tree uh, staple that I've done on my face and I'm just filling it in with a dark brown and I'm just using a flat brush and, and what I'm doing here right now is that I'm thickening in thickening the trunk of the tree because when I place my face to one side I couldn't really see it straight on so I felt like I needed to bring more of that tree in towards the mid center of my face still going in with that brown all over my face and I've just now finished doing everything and don't worry about you know the colors mixing and lightening because everything's going to be a lot more dramatic as you've seen probably in the cover photo going in with a nice white and brown mix it's a very very light um, brown mix that I've just created and I'm just giving this tree trunk and branches some texture before I add more texture later on afterwards and some shadow and, and stuff like that. Going in with the leaves, I am now using a green that I have not used on my face yet, but it is a different shade of green. And I am just using the brush itself to create the leaves. So I'm using, you know, the tip of the brush to create the leaves, as well as the base of it. And then I'm going in with that lighter green that I've used on my um, highlighted grass parts to, you know, just give these leaves a little bit more definition because, you know, you've got your highlights and you've got your low lights and you've got your shadow low lights are probably shadows anyway we're going to move on and we are going to continue with this look and we are going to now do the chest piece on my mouth now if you've not seen or or read the story of Gr the brothers Grimm's or Grimm's brothers um, juniper tree I don't want to give too much away but the chest is a very um, it's it's one of the most important parts of the story without this chest there probably wouldn't be a story or the story would have just come across a, a, a different way as you just saw i just placed that dark brown that i've used on my tree branch and and trunk and then i'm going in with a black just to give some dirty dustiness to the look just giving it more of a woody wood effect you know the wood that you would find in an old pieced chest so we're going to move on very quickly before you know i get carried away with the blending and now we're going to create the brass or gold straps um strappings fastenings fastenings i really don't know how to say that word fastening or fastening I, I say fasten, fasten up your jacket. So yes, I'm doing the fastenings on my face right here. This, that's the middle one. And then on the sides would be like, you know, just the normal decorative detailing that I would do, or you would see on a chest. As you can see, I've just gone in with some black with a small tipped brush and I'm just creating some definition to those uh, gold marks that I've done, you know, the straps, the fastenings and, um, you know, yeah, we're going to continue using that black to outline our branches and the trunk of our tree. I'm going in very wavy and um, not too careful because I kind of want this look to look more like a painting not a cartoon but more of a painting done by someone that would have painted way back in the day when the story was kind of invented like something you would see in a storybook but with color because you would have normally would have seen something like this in black and white so after i've done that i'm just going to use that same brush that i've detailed all on over my face with and i've made it dry and i'm just going to blend those black lines all over before we continue and move on to put in a barley color so yes this is a barley color it's not brown i've not mixed it this is a snazaroo standard barley brown color and i'm just creating more detail onto the branches and the trunk of the tree
now it's time to create the bird and I rather I rather wanted the uh, bird to be more like a silhouette than anything else because I didn't want it to be that apparent I wanted someone to be able to look at what I've done on my face and be like yeah that's a bird rather than it being very carefully a bird and I also wanted it to be like a crow because in my vision in you know reading the story and hearing the musical I just feel like the bird would be a crow it wouldn't be a robin it wouldn't be a dove I just feel like the story is dark as it is I feel like to make the story even darker maybe it would be a crow I mean it would be really weird if it was a dove that went around doing what it did afterwards but whatever I'm not gonna give too much of the story away if you've not seen the story anyway those gold marks on my face my chest are looking a little bit dull so I'm gonna go back in with another layer of gold and just fill those in a little bit more before I do some detailing on my lips which I'm going to do the keyhole and like the bolts and everything but before I do that I'm going to add some white blotches everywhere now my vision is because of the story there is some snow in the story and I'm not too sure if there's snow in throughout the whole story but there is some snow and references to snow in the story so these white blotches that I'm doing might look like clouds but they're meant to look like snow sorry if that's not apparent and then I'm gonna go in with a black and just you know create like little swells and everything just to give some definition to those blotches to make it look like it's something other than being on the tree and not just placed onto my face or whatever. And we are now at the closing part of the tutorial and as you can see I'm using black to fill in my uh, keyhole and now I'm putting on bolts onto my face and I do stop and pause for a second and look at myself and feel like do I need to add more bolts? Yes, I do. So I place more bolts on top of the uh, keyhole. What you can see me doing here right now is just creating some sort of wood effect onto that chest just to give it more life and definition to it all and depth. And then, yeah, you can see me here placing those bolts on. And yeah, that's it. Beauty shots. So guys, that's how I got the look and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. This is a face painting experience. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe to the channel and comment down below, you know. Uh. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Rogue Marby Scott.